Some of you guys have been asking to show, see what else I do working wise. So I thought I'd give you a little uh, tour of our little hometown theater, or my home theater. Sometimes I go to College Station or Bryan or Columbus, but uh, this is the theater I'm at mostly. In fact, this is our schedule for the rest of the year. I just finished the uh, Lanterns and Legends. That's where uh, six actors go out to the graveyard near Halloween and uh, they do a history of people buried there and we take on their persona, uh, personas. Last year I was a lawyer from 1900. This year I was a German Jew from 1866. And now this is the, the play we're getting ready for. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm building some sets. This is our little theater. It's building, it's part of a much bigger complex that was divided up years ago. And 30 years ago, a lady gave us this little part of the building. We have a board for putting all of our pictures of the cast. All kinds of things go on here. Here's last year's Christmas show. I don't know if you can see me, but I'm back there on the left behind the, the short sheriff. That was a fun one. That was the man who wanted to be Santa Claus. We do all kinds of plays here. This is the lobby area. Pardon the mess. Oh, yesterday I got tired of those plastic crappy sawhorses, so I went looking and I found these. These are cool. You pull one button and the legs swing out and fold out automatically. I'm really liking those. I have to go outside the door and do all the major cutting out there for plywood and stuff. That's where a little Dewalt uh, battery powered saw comes in handy. This is a strange building. It's only from this area here to that wall there, 33 feet wide. That's pretty small to put on plays like we put on. Let me go show you what I have to contend with. This is the door to the house. When it gets opened up, people come down this hallway. And on this play, they're gonna come in this door. And then we have seats on this side and seats on that side. So this is not a theater in a round, maybe a theater in a rectangle. And basically what that means is I only have two walls to work with. That wall and this wall. Now that's a permanent door over there for the fire escape. But these walls, we change around to suit whatever we need. For this play, I had to make that wall there and we're trying to do this cheap, so I use the cheapest reuse stuff anywhere I can. But that's an archway that'll lead off to the right. That board right there will be a partition that goes back behind this wall, and blocks off that little stair banister. And then we have a set of stairs that I made out of a couple old pallets. I'm gonna put a face on the front of them. And it'll look pretty good. Got to finish up there. But as you can see, we're hard at work here. This is my stage toolbox setup that I take with me to stages to make things. Got this assortment of nail guns and drills and saws and screws. And I try to make things where you can take it apart and reuse it. But these little Milwaukee pack outs make it really nice. Now this play, I did three, four years ago up in uh, Bryan, Texas in College Station. And it was in a regular proscenium theater stage where the stage 
is on one side and the audience is on the other, just like you normally would think. Well, there I could do things a lot different in that I could take and put uh, a hidden room inside a wall, then put like a bookcase or something over it. Here, I can't do that because if you put anybody, say like in a hidden room in there, nobody can see them from these sides over here. So whenever I do something like that, I need to make it to where people can see them. And so years ago, I came up with this little idea and uh, still just working on this here. Let me see if I can get you guys propped up where you can see what I'm going to do. To make people where they can see what's going on here, I made a rotating wall. I made this thing years ago. Made improvements over the years. This year, I installed those pieces of metal for the casters to ride on. That's a double thickness piece of plywood ring down there that I level. This old building, the floor is really uneven. And there's a caster, and they go all the way around. Show you what's going on this side I've got to finish this side's going to have a bar right here and I have to be able to put a dead body behind the bar so I'm working on ways of doing that so we're going to have a bar top that comes around in a corner a curve here and then this stool will set here we're going to bolt it down and then the bar will end here so at first the actor's got to sit on the stool and lean on the bar and then later on she's moved from here to behind the bar and i got to put a little door there so she can hide there until it's time to pop out this is the center pivot of the uh rotating table it's got inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing arms that go all the way out to the casters and then the plywood's bolted to it and that's a stub axle replacement for a trailer it's got a those little bolts right there bolted where the lug nuts would be and i made a plate for it and welded all that together it kind of makes it easy to turn and and put these little half moons in it so nobody trips. For some of you old guys like to do woodwork and stuff like that, find a local theater. They always need help building sets. I'm trying to get Don real come down and help, but I'm afraid he'll just be wanting to be an actor from then on. Let me show you some of the props I'm working on. Well, as you can see, I've been to the hardware store. Got an assortment of things for today's projects. Got some all thread and piece of steel and some finials and some rope and some stuff to make a garage. These are little knives I've been working on. In this play, we have three different times you see the knife. One while it's on the wall, so you just need the regular one. Now these you get off of eBay, and I took and put them on the uh, the grinder, and I dulled the heck out of them. They were sharp. I was shocked for a thirteen dollar knife. This one is when it comes out of the 
the back of the, the murder victim. And then this one is for when it goes into the back of the murder victim. Uh, the murder victim in this play is a girl, so she will be wearing a bra. So we will take and cut a piece of this thin steel and shape it to the back of her bra. And then this is a hundred pound pull magnet that whoever stabs her will have to hit the target. But that's how you make a knife go into somebody's back. A couple years ago, I did a dial in for murder and I was stabbed in the back with a pair of scissors. That was harder to do. This was pretty cool. I just took and put this on the bandsaw and cut a flat spot in the blade. That cheap Chinese stainless steel cut just like wasn't even there. Then I drilled an eight by 32 hole. And these magnets I bought were already uh, drilled. So just put a screw in it to hold it on. And then that's a hundred pound pull magnet. And I hope it's enough to go through fabric and hit that plate. It was a real thin plate. If it was a thicker plate, it would hold even more, but I just don't have the way to make it look realistic. So that's some of the things you can do when you get involved with the theater. I've got to make a secret knob to, to open the turntable door. So I got some stuff here. I'll show you a picture of that when I'm through. Over here on the wall, I'm going to make a weapons board. It'll have some swords and axes, and you, you follow the script, and the script says he's got uh, an axe, and then another person says, no, two, and then three, and then two broad swords, a brace of pistols, and a garrote. So all that's got to go on that wall. I'll show you when I get through some of the trim work. One of the things you do in a play is I try to make it look realistic on a budget. The cost of materials is going so sky high. Before I would have made this piece go all the way to the ceiling, but because it's expensive, we're going to take a little bit of a poetic license here. I always put just enough nails in them to hold it so you can take it apart. Now, this is part of my plan. When you're working on a set that's got two sides, you got to be able to tell the people that are moving the turntable when to move the turntable. In other plays, I've taken and put in like a sconce on the wall. I just don't have the room here. And then pull it down. This time, I strolled through the lumber yard and let me show you what I found. This little wall here goes all the way back. And comes out over here. And being cheap, because I don't have any budget, most of this has been coming out of my pocket on this play, I found this little finial here, and I'm going to put that on the end of this straighted rod, which will go all the way through the wall, and have a spring on the back. So that when the actor comes over to activate the wall, they'll grab this here and pull it out a little bit and then let it go and it'll go like that when it goes back. And that'll be the cue for the people to turn the wall. All those little things you gotta come up with does, but I think people are gonna snag on this because they're trying to stuff a body in this closet. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off so then round it off with some sandpaper so it won't stick out for another inch and I think it'll look nicer. What I gotta do is make a, a way to attach the all thread to this. So what I'm doing is I'm taking and 
unscrewing this dowel connector they had in there. And I need to change that out to another piece of a puzzle, hardware. These are called hanger bolts. And they're wood screws on one end, like this came out of here. And so I'm just gonna screw that back into that hole. can. You know, you could try to glue that in, but I'm afraid the connection would break in the middle of the play. We don't need that happening. It's tight. This one's quite a bit longer than the one that came on it, but it doesn't matter because what I need to do is now convert that over. And I'm going to use a coupling nut to do that. Y'all see. Now, for the threaded rod. Harden the train noise. It's what we have to put up with around here, especially during a play. It's not fun, but we do it. There we go. So now, I've got a a pull handle that can go all the way through the wall. I'll put this spring on the back and save money. I just use the other coupling nut to hold it on with a washer. That ought to work. Bits. Let me get a close up on it. A little bit pulls itself in as it's turning. Come on, camera. I like this one. See where it's going to come out. It's a fake switch here. It's going to come out right through that. I don't know if this battery will last that long. Sometimes, if you leave these things uh, rest for a minute, you'll get a little bit more life out of them. see aha well that's not too bad for just blind guessing well there's the finished product one on each side that one's a dummy over there this one and the noise kind of gives it a realistic like it's unlatching something built Back here, put a little guard on it so that somebody wouldn't walk by and snag on this thing. And basically, and that'll let the person that's standing over there pushing on the, the wall know when to start. It's got a little detent down there. It keeps it in position so it knows when to stop. So, 
Well, that's a little bit of what I do on my fun time. You gotta remember, this will all be torn down on the 14th of December, make way for a new play. So you, you want it to look decent, but paint and a little trick we use is we take masking tape and we'll put over these corners and then paint it. It looks good from 20 feet away. It's how you do it on a budget. If you want more of these, just let me know in the comments. If you don't, let me know. I won't ever do it again. Bye.